Hi, uh, once again, and hello to our new class. We will be talking about the Maya Curve Editor, which is um, part of a section on animation uh, in general. Um, so, I have a character here that I've um, done some work on uh, that I've animated, but first let me show you or explain a bit more about something we've talked about before, which are the controls. Now, these controls, uh, they're the ones that control, they're the ones that determine how the character moves or what it can move. We talked about how we place a skeleton or create a skeleton and then attach it to our uh, mesh and then they, it becomes a part of the character mesh that we have created and now gives the mesh the ability to move based on the skeletal structure uh, beneath it. All right. So um, you then create controls around it to use to move that skeleton structure that we can't see, and that also then moves the uh, mesh body that has been skinned or attached to the skeleton. This is what's called a rig, the combination of the mesh. All right. This mesh that we can, I can select now, and the rig, these controls, and this um, curve controls around it. This is called a rig. This is how you can animate a character. You cannot animate a character which is mesh alone, except you want to use the formats or some stuff like that. But when you have this uh, skeletal structure that has then been attached to these curves, um, you then have what is called a rig. Um, I remember I may not have spoken too much about how to get your own rig and get started with it, but um, like you can always go online and go to turbosquid.com or creativecrash.com, all right, and you can see characters that have already been rigged. Um, some of them have that written on it, or you can just search and, like I have, search for rig characters. And you will see a whole lot of characters that have been rigged and ready for animation. What that means is that as soon as you open this in your software, you would have you will see those controls so that you can use them to begin to move and animate these characters. Some of them cost money and some others are free. Alright, so if you just want to play around with stuff, um, you can look for some of these free um, once and then start work with oh, the same thing with Creative Crash. Um, you have a whole lot of re characters. A lot of them, like I said, cost money because people have used time and energy to create those rigs. Um, but if you have the money or you can look for free versions, um, let me do that so you can see some of the free versions. All right. If you do that, you can find a lot of other rigged versions that are free. Um, and you can begin to work with that to create um, your own animation. So, um, back here. So, what we want to talk about is um, the curve editor, Maya's curve editor. But to do that, you have to animate something. So. When you get your own rig, play around with it, create a few keyframes by moving these controls and pressing the S button or right clicking on any of these channels or all the channels by just, just click and dragging and then click the key selected or key all um, button. So you will get that. So I've done a bit of animation on this and I've just done a very simple jump. All right. If I can play that through um, for you, you can see that. All right, you can see that's the jump. All right, pretty simple stuff. All right. Now, as you see these controls, these controls. If I click on any of them, you can see the keyframes that I set on any on each one of them. You can see what I've set on each one of them from the 
keys that you see in your timeline or range view uh range viewer all right so this is um how you see the keys you have set all right but if you want more control over this now as i've said the keys a lot of them will not um arrange the right way not so much as arrange the right way but you will have motion that is not smooth and that is a bit angular which is what you may experience if you see a robot move but you are trying to create an organic motion for your character and so you need more curves and straight lines remember we talked about that in our last class we were talking about the principles of animation that appeal is a uh, appeal refers to how your animation um flows uh in such a way that it is simple it is clean uh motions are smooth and curved rather than angular and uh clumsy right so when you first do your first set of keyframes and set them like this what it is called in animation is called blocking what you have done is that you have just set a few things um you have just set a few keyframes to kind of just get a sense of the movement that you want to see all right but you need to uh, do a little more than that all right to get your animations to a point where they look smooth where motion of hands and legs and uh, basic body motion where they look smooth and that is what you need the Maya curve editor for because you can then go in and get a more focused look at your curves uh, that you curves that are created with your uh, keys and then smoothing them work on them a bit to get something a lot better like we've talked about the key to good animation is um uh you know acts uh acts a r c k no a r c s sorry um our acts because in the acts are how we create more believable and more appealing motion nobody moves their bodies in straight lines except robot all right and except you are except you are animating a robot you want to do stuff that is more organic people with the eye and your audience the eye recognizing curved motion as more believable and realistic than straight motions um from place to place than like the movement of the robot so that is what you want to achieve and to do that uh um, you have to go into the curve editor um I must confess that the curve editor can be a little bit of a scary place if you haven't worked with it before, all right? And so you're going to need a bit of confidence to go in there and sift through what you will see. So this is what my curve editor will look like. Uh, to access the Maya curve editor, you want to come to um, Windows, Animation, Editors, your graph editor this is how you get to your Maya curve editor so if I click on that um, and stretch this out a bit I selected all the controls on this character and this is what it looks like at first sight this is what it looks like looks like and this this is the bane of animators all over the world the look of the curve editor when you first go into it and it can be very confusing and a very tiring process to kind of sift through and look for the things that you actually want and begin to work with them all right but with a bit of practice and um, confidence uh, you'll be able to look at this and then realize that you can drill further down and look at it in a much more simple way so the way that i do that usually is to um is to then select controls individually remember we have selected all the controls together but this gives us this mess of curves all right and you can't work with that these curves are made up of all the points that you have created so if i come back to my slider you can see this red line that suggests where i am on my timeline now this axis is the axis of time continuous time all right and this is the axis of um the unit of movement either in um either as the 
trans as as translation motion or rotation motion this is always the axis and you see that it starts the middle point is zero the axis is at zero and then goes above and below to so show you that sometimes motion can go in the negative or opposite direction all right so if you notice that i have a keyframe at one showing this red line here and you have this dot here if i move to eight you can see that there are dots here where there are no points you don't see any dots where there are no keyframes in my range slider you don't see any points but as soon as you come here you can see these and these and these and these and you can see how they correspond to motion in our character all right so when you start off with this this can be a bit confusing but what you need to do is drill down by doing that you want to start selecting things um controls separately and working on them separately now this is a separate window and that can block out your scene so sometimes you want to be able to see everything at once so i, I close this in my viewport i can come to my panels view and come down to layout layout and then i come to the kind of layout this is how it can split this viewport in different directions so i might want to select the two pane stacks that is one on top and one below so say two planes stacked all right so by doing that i have my perspective which is what i had before here yeah? And then I have a second view and with its own set of menus. So I can come down here and um, select from the panels what panel I want. There are a few default ones that it comes with. So I just look for the one I want, which is the graph editor. And there we go. So we have our curve editor and um, our perspective view. So you can see what you do in one and see how it affects the other. So to work on an animation like this, you need to go down to each of the um, controls one by one. So I just select this leg and I go through and see how it moves from beginning to the end of the animation. Right At this point, the, car, the, the foot is supposed to be flat on the ground. All right. So I'm looking for the axis that would, um, that would control the height, the movement of this character, of this foot up, that will usually be my trans, this translate Y, because that is, this is the, um, axis of Y, and you can see the green axis here. So this is what will control how my character moves. Alright, there are a few things that you can do to better see your curves, alright. Um, some of them have to do with holding the shift button and dragging your right and um left mouse buttons or holding shift and holding alt and then dragging around with your left and um right or middle mouse button each of them doing something separate so you can try that and see how it works so let's just get back to doing the stuff that we're supposed to do here all right um so this is my curve i can zoom in by using my middle scrolling wheel to scroll in the leg is supposed to remain on the floor so you want to look at that line and make sure this is the line that so this is the line that suggests keys as height all right so if the leg was on the floor this one should be straight the line should be straight throughout throughout but notice here that just before the leg starts um leaving the floor and going up we have a curve downwards. Now that curve shouldn't be there because the leg should still remain in the same place before it jumps. That means we have a curve that is going outside of its normal um, zone of movement. All right, it should remain flat because the leg should be on the floor. But you can see how the leg goes into the floor here, and you don't want those kind of um, clashes with the floor they break the and they break the look of your animation and it just shows that this is a rookie work when you allow one object to um, interlay with another when it's supposed to be a surface all right so what we need to do now is find a way to straighten out this curve now there are tools at the top of our Maya editor 
that you can use and work with to achieve to work with keyframes. The first, uh, a few of them. Uh, this first one talks about making curves, um, curve around or across the key, all right, in an automated way. So this one, Maya does the calculation of how it feels the curves should go, all right. This one uh, uses planes to determine how the curve should um, go around or through a key. This one determines, uses a clamped method, which is it stops it, it makes it straight at the point. We don't always use everything, all right? This is this is a linear one where it breaks everything into straight lines, no matter what it has. This one breaks them into flat lines. This one, um, these two breaks them into steps, all right? And so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm not going to go through every tool here because that is not the end. The aim is to get you to use and see the things that work the most, the things you are going to be using the most often. All right, so we have a key here, all right, and this is the handle. You will always see a tangent handle uh, along that key, and that is the one that determines how the curve moves, all right? Now, if I try to straighten this line over here by holding it and dragging, all right, which means I achieved the straight line that I wanted now. But that also means that the leg goes through a slowing process as it gets off the ground. And sometimes that is not what you want your character to do. You don't want your character to spend too long on the floor. Sometimes you need it to go off the floor in a flash. Yes, the truth is that no, um, no uh, object picks up its constant acceleration. There must be some kind of increase. But sometimes you need the motion to be faster than what you will get with a curve that slopes in like this. So what you want to do is break this handle so you can move this one separate from this handle. Remember there are two handles on both sides. We like this one to remain like this to ensure the flatness, but we want this to be able to bend upwards to create a bit of steepness. All right, so what you want to do is break this handle and to do that, there's a key that says break is a button for breaking tangent. So when I do that, notice that there's a separation. This is going to do, this becomes um, purple. So we just select round our purple nodes. Now with that one highlights in yellow to show that only that handle has been selected. And I can then hold my middle mouse or scroll button, hold it down, dragging on that handle and pulling it up. Now by doing that, what I do is that I Increase the steepness of that curve and thereby change the way that the motion goes up. Right, so and ensure that the foot remained on the floor throughout, or at least the control remained on this floor throughout, and then it started going up. Right, and went up in a pretty linear fashion, which is what we want. Right now, you want to talk about the tip here, and notice that there's a curve. And the handles of it are also not flat, which means that the curve overshoots the key. You want to always make sure that your curves remain controllable. Now you don't, you cannot measure. There's no way to measure how higher than this key that we select created. This curve is here. Yeah, it doesn't look like a lot, but there's no way to measure it. So you want to be able to control those excess excess um, curve motions. So usually you want to just flatten that so that the curves remain at the tip that you can control all right so by clicking on a flatten flat tangent on that particular key we create a flat tangent so that we know that that is the peak of that curve it does not go higher than the point we have created on it all right and then i can go down as the foot comes back down um we talked about how we want curve motion as much as possible now, at this place, the curve comes down a bit and then goes back up for just a bit, all right? And that, even though you may not see that with your eyes, you understand that um, motions like that will always cause a bit of challenge, all right, in motion. People may not be able to see exactly why they are not feeling that part of your animation, but it will just not feel right. So, you want 
smooth curves as much as possible. We've talked about that. All right. So you have to now decide how you want to deal with this depression in your curve. One thing you can do is to move it up so that it falls in line with the general path of the curve. Note that we are talking about creating smooth curves all the time. So as much as possible, if you don't need extra depressions, if they don't affect your animation, you want to remove them or fix them. So this is where we are. I select that um I select that key and then with my middle mouse button and my shift I pull that curve back and pull it straight so that it follows the general flow of the curve. You can also take the edges and turn it around so that you achieve something more um curvilinear. Right. Note at this point that this curve is not exactly smooth. All right. If you look at the handle, you can see that the handle on this side goes below the curve, which means that you are not achieving the smoothest curve you can get. All right. So to to fix that, I also do middle mouse button and drag. All right. Your aim is to achieve smooth running curves. I need to tweak this and bring it back down by holding my shift and middle mouse button. All right. So there I have that. Okay. Now you can see that the motion of the foot will just slowly curve and come down in a simple manner till it gets to this point. At this point, it we need to hold the motion a bit because the foot needs to remain above the floor. As you can see, it, is, it needs to remain above the floor. If I drag this lower to create a better curve, you will see that it breaks the surface. So you may want to leave that there, but then you want to control how else it, fall, it goes in through the rest. So to do that, um, I come to my next keyframe. Notice that we also have a curve again that is breaking the surface and not when your foot hits the floor it doesn't go through the floor so this excess motion down we don't need it to do that we need to straighten this point again like we did before you want to break the handle by breaking those tangents there then selecting this side of the handle and pulling it up with your middle mouse and click and drag and holding it there all right so there you have it. You have your curve here, still as you can control if you want, and you still have your straight line here, which is supposed to show that your foot hits the floor and remains flat on the floor. All right. So that is one. Notice that that is we have just fixed one leg. Now, if I want to fix the second leg, I have to click on that control to and then expand and move closer in to see what my curves are doing. Again, I want to focus on translate Y, so I can do the same thing I've done before um, to some of these excesses that you can already see. All right. Breaking that, selecting this, dragging it straight. All right. Um, and you can always make sure you go is are able to go back, play and drag through and see how the motion looks now. Because sometimes things may hold in places you don't want them to hold, or you may need to hold certain things or change the height. So if I wanted this foot to go up faster than this one, which is just basically to add a bit of randomness to the way the foot will go up the floor, I want to select that key with my shift button holding and clicking my middle mouse button and then dragging this up a bit. All right. And you can see that that foot is already high. It means that when I play this back, that leg is likely to jump higher immediately. All right. And the rest. So you've achieved a bit of holding there. And these are kind of things that you use to control your slow ins and slow out. Or uh, it's your characters by moving the keys up or down. So that you change the steepness and thus the speed at which one frame changes or evolves into another. Again, we have the challenge of overshooting the curve and we can just flatten that out here. Yeah? And 
sometimes there are keys that you have created that are unnecessary uh, because you have because you have the general best fit curve that you want and certain keys are just not necessary to achieving what you want in those cases you want to just delete those so if you select the curl with your bounding box you can just click delete on your keyboard and you have a um, broken key um, you may notice that the curve has now blown up a bit uh, if this is if this is fine with you then you have no worries you can leave it the way it is because that will mean a less steep curve and thus a slower motion as the leg gets to the top of the um, of the uh, the peak of the curve all right and then it drops downwards and then you want to again make sure that when your foot hits the floor it does not overshoot and drop below the ground surface so i want to break this key here the tangent and then pull this back in line so that we have a straight line that way our object hits the floor and remains on the floor Let's just fix the curve here all right, so if I go back and play this now, especially the motion on the floor, you will notice that it is just a lot more smooth. It's just smoother than it was before. All right, this is because you have worked on how um, how the curve should look. Now, notice that we only worked on the translate Y. We can do the same thing and go through the other translate uh, keys or rotate keys, depending on what you're working on. And just fix issues that you may find with your um, with the rotations. If this is rotation, for instance, there is some rotation that is making the leg go in the opposite direction before it returns up. You want to fix that by doing the same thing you've done. So, irrespective of what attribute you are editing, the same tools work to create good-looking curves as much as possible. Sometimes a curve is not the best solution. Sometimes a straight line, as you have seen here, all right, because you are holding a position, especially when we are talking about feet hitting the ground and flat, all right. So you want to hold that. Sometimes you want to move the keys to create smoother motion um, and slightly less uh, sped up because the steep is so high. All right, so you want to just do that sometimes and work with it. Say we wanted to add, let me just flatten this. This is our peak and drop this a bit. So we wanted to add a key to this without going here and pressing an S. You can add a point directly to the curve. Just come to this portion on the side here and look at the insert key tool. All right. And I click on that, then I with my middle mouse button, I click on the curve once to select the curve with my well not with your middle mouse with your um left mouse button, you click the curve to select it, and then with your middle mouse button, you click on the point along the curve, and like that you create you create a new keyframe. Since this is frame 23, you can see the keyframe that has been created, and then you can work on that the same way you've worked on every other thing to work. So I'm moving that key up there, just selecting this. I'm moving with my middle mouse button. This keyframe may not do anything, even when I move it like this, it may not affect that much the flow of the curve and just breaks it in a very awkward way. So I can just decide to delete that completely selecting and deleting and there you have a curve that looks more um, befitting all right always play back as much as possible to see what you are doing now sometimes the curves that you are seeing can um, this that can they can block your better understanding of what is moving and how they are moving. So sometimes I can come to my show in the top panel and deselect the knob curves. So I don't see the knob curves anymore. Then I can go back and play this. And you can see that your foot, um, foot are better 
moving now and so that's how you work you work that way through all the curves as much as possible it takes time that is why this stage is called polishing um, because it's the stage where you go through one by one and you sort out um, mess any mess that you can see in the character that you are trying to create all right um, there's no other way around it. This is the way it is done all over the world. If you have heard of motion capture, uh, motion capture is not the complete solution. It really has ever been because even when motion capture is done, you still have to give the curves that are created to animators to work on, to smoothen out, to remove and edit. And these same kind of curves are what you will get back from your technical, um, guys when they return the captured Data. These same curves are what they will give you, and then you must now sift through again the same way and try and get curves that will look smooth, curved because and um, that look smooth because there's no other way. This is the only way. So when you think about motion capture and animation, it is not always the complete solution. It still has to go through this process of being moved around straightened by animators to still make it look and feel right all right um so that's a bit on the curve editor there's quite a lot you can do but that is the basic process all right of going through so even if all you are doing is animating a box all right from one position to the other as long as you want to affect the speed of that box all right let me just try and do this As long as all you want to do, as long as you still want to affect how this moves, all right, and make sure that it looks as smooth as possible, you will still need the effect of the curve editor. So what we have in our editor right now for the keys that I've created, display this through so that you can just see, is there are two straight lines, one for the translation, and one for that rotation that I've created. But remember, I've talked about how straight lines are very boring. And so you want to create something that is a bit more interesting. So you want to try out some curvature on it. So you can start that out by just selecting the keys and flattening them. And already you have a curve that you can work with. And if this motion, which means that it will be slow at the beginning, then pick up speed and rotation. And then slowly come back into its stop. Sometimes you may want it to be much faster at the beginning. So you want to take this curve. You may decide to break it. I will break it just to show you and do that. All right. By doing this, you are ensuring that the object begins to move immediately. It is kicked and to rotate. So, for instance, if there is a ball being kicked, the force of the kick is usually so. Um, is enough to make sure that the ball moves very fast from the foot of that person. It can slow down as it gets to its end, or at the point where it is being kicked, you want it to come out very fast. So you create a steep, as steep a curve as you can to try and show that increase, that uh, speed increase at the point of impact. So it comes smooth, it comes out very fast, and then it can slow down towards the end so if i play that now you can see that it starts out with a huge rotation and then comes out and then stops if i come back and i translate and i want to do the same thing so i flatten this which means that it will slowly move out at the beginning and slowly stop so like i said before if you are kicking this door kicking this box you make the 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 out the Coming out of the first keyframe needs to be fast, and you can only achieve that by creating something very steep at the beginning. So I can pull this. Be always careful of overshoots like this point where the curve becomes higher, becomes exceeds the point of uh, the next keyframe. All right, so you want to be careful of things like that because you cannot control how they look and how they were affect. The object. So you want to, want to reduce that curve back again. Um, 
so that it is either at the line of it or just rising into it. All right, so and you play that through. You can see that it comes out very fast or slows down, which is a lot more realistic when you think about if somebody kicks a box, it moves at the force of the kick for a while and then slows down. Yeah. So those same um, that the theory that you are learning about curves, they work not just for um, characters like this with many controls, but for simple stuff like a box. This is one of the places that I think that a lot of animators in our own uh, in our side of the world, if I can use that word, don't get yet that need for advanced polish of your moves simply because you can create keyframes does not mean that your animation is good just yet. You need to be able to think about the motion, think about the weight that are involved, the speed that I the speed uh, increase or decreases that are involved, the effect of materials and nature and friction around your movement and then take that into consideration um, in how objects move all right so that is all about the Maya editor this is not exhaustive it is not meant to be exhaustive um, because there's a lot of other tools that you can also use there's a menu with a lot of other things that I could show you but this is just meant to get you to start working with this um, software and the the curve editor especially and begin to see how you can use it to do simple things. Remember we have not had to use anything complex just to make this box look better at the motion it is supposed to um, portray. So um, let's take that in mind. All right.